It seems like every time you look at a MotoGP bike, another lever has appeared and another <laughs> button. It must be for you as a rider, yeah, going yeah. through every, every year, someone says, oh, there's a new button, you have to remember how to use this. Can you talk us through, take us through what's on the handlebars and, and what each of the buttons and switches does? All right, so then for start, here we have a neutral neutral lever. Yep. So this is just to avoid to get into neutral accidentally. So <laughs> otherwise, if you don't push it, you never get into neutral. Uh, then here, uh, there is the front device lever. So we actually brake and like a motocross bike would do. Uh, the whole shot. Yeah we, yeah, we push it. At the same time, we're braking hard to deepen the stroke on the front fork to get the whole shot device uh, activated. This is the kill, uh, kill switch for stopping the, the bike. And then on to the left side, we have the front, uh, front brake adjuster. So whenever we have a, a shake on the handlebars and our uh, brake pads get uh, uh, separate, then uh, we, we, we can adjust the front, front lever with the, yeah. with the left hand. And then we have a traction control button a uh, launch control button, um, pit limiter, power, and uh, engine brake. Yeah. So here you can you can sh uh, change your maps. You have three different each uh, in this in the power uh, torque. Uh, sorry, torque um, traction control and engine brake. And then this one is the the lever that activates the right side device on the rear. So every time we go on the exit of the turn to avoid wheelie or kind of to, to be able to put more power down, we, um, we touch this one, then the bike drops on the rear, and then that, that avoids uh, quite a lot of the wheelie. Yeah, so, so you're actually using the ride height device two or three times a lap? Uh, normally, normally you use it uh, out of the hairpins yeah. or out of some sharp uh, corners. Um, and especially you use it if the corner that is coming after the straight, it's uh, heartbreaking. Yeah. Because if it's a fast corner, you, you don't brake hard, uh, then the rear would not come up again. Yeah, so you would, you would be on a chopper. <laughs> and then the front, the front feeling is, is not good. It's gone. Wow. And then throughout the race, like the, the traction control, the engine torque, the engine braking, do you, do you sort of set that and leave it or do you use that to manage on tire wear? And no, normally uh, during practice you kind of modify every, every time a little bit here, a little bit there uh, to improve the, the feeling and then by the race you don't use it much unless like uh, you say you have a race where the tire is on the limit. Yeah. And then uh, you have to manage. Uh, you have to manage a bit at the beginning, and then towards the end to. You can open. Yeah. It. Blows my mind time and time again. Yeah, we we see you guys on on the screen or from the side of the circuit, and we're going, like the riding you're doing is obviously at a level that most people can't compute. And then to realise that while you're doing all that, you're changing ride height, you're adjusting traction control, like. Well, a... I, all all of this action here is it, it's easy on some tracks and almost impossible at some other tracks. Yeah. Uh, e even uh, tearing off the, the visor is, is really uh, difficult at some, at some places because bike is shaking, bike is moving, and, you don't, and basically you have to roll off to kind of have to one pair. second. To, <laughs> otherwise, if you keep always open, uh, the bike is shaking and moving that you don't have any time to, to even check uh, what you're doing. <laughs> the greatest sport on earth, isn't it? <laughs> awesome. When someone first steps on a MotoGP bike, so when a rider, like, like a, even, even a rider changing team, but like a new rider comes onto a MotoGP bike, like how long, say they've come from Moto2, so they're, you know, they're obviously at the right level, in their first day of testing, like are they just leaving this stuff alone and just putting hours in, or are they changing stuff straight away, or does it depend on the rider? I, I guess it depends on the rider, but most common thing is to just leave it things alone. Don't think much on gadgets yeah. and then just ride the bike and get a, a bit used to, to the feeling of the power. Because also what happens when you, when you change from Superbike to MotoGP or uh, Moto2 to, to MotoGP is that the track maybe you're familiar with 
but the track change for, for a MotoGP. Yeah. So many times you exit the corner and you have a, a straight, maybe not the longer one, but on a smaller bike, it would feel like you have time to be straight, go straight and brake for the next one. Yeah. When you jump on a motorbike, that straight is not anymore a straight. You're still... it, turns, it turns out that you exit, the bike is never really straight, you are going left, then you have to come back to your line to prepare the braking and then you are braking. So yeah. basically you, you did like a chicane, a long chicane, uh, in order to keep the power. Yeah, oh, so if the bike is lent slightly, you yes, it because lend. if you would let's say put the bike straight, it would wheelie, yeah, and then you would not put the power down. So you kind of always keep it on angle, and then therefore you you're going left. Then but you you have to turn back. So at the end, the track changed for yeah, you exactly. for your image, wow, yeah. and then you think, okay, here is a straight, I can rest. No, it's not anymore like this. <laughs> so you have to adapt to to these to these things uh, also on your first on your first go. But I I would say power of the of the engine and power of the brakes is what most uh, mostly uh, is a surprise yeah it's, it's a big surprise for the riders how long like how long does it take a good motor 2 rider when they come up it, how long typically does it take them to get their head around this i think it takes some it takes some time because you have to learn what where the limit is and how much you can play in that limit, what, what margin you have once you are around the limit. Yeah. And, and that, that is a lot to do with how the bike is, but also the tires. The tires are completely different and uh, you, have, you have to have different scenarios like a bit warm, a bit cold, uh, new tires, old tires. And, and, and for that you need, you need time on the bike. So, also, um, I guess that you do your first test and then you go back home and then your, your brain and your body has time to kind of reset and then once you are come back on the second test, maybe uh, two weeks after or one month after, you are already better prepared. Yeah, yeah you program something yes. in there yes. to, to get used to it. Wow, yeah. As well physically. Yes, you, you, you are used to do some kind of effort and now here it's much more. Yeah. So your body has to kind of uh, find how to push the handlebars, how to push the foot pegs in order to move on the bike and make the bike work. Yeah. And are they, like you said a little bit, you have to find the limit and, and work out. Are they, are they on a knife edge? Are they, when, I, when, when it comes to the limit, is there a very fine line where it's good, 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 gone, or is it? Yeah, kind of. It is, it is like that. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. I mean, you, 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 you can progress to the limit, but there are some, some scenarios where when maybe it's windy or maybe you have not many corners to one side, that is actually like you, like you said. Yeah, fine line. Yeah. I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> yes. yes. Yeah, wow. Awesome.